Here we go. So what we have is we have the zeros of 2, 4 plus square root of 5, and 4 minus square root of 5. And what we need to make sure that we do is see if we can find the polynomial. So I'm going to use this just like I've done all the previous examples. When given the zeros, the first thing we want to do is remember we can write the zeros as intercepts. So we could say that x equals 2, x equals 4 plus square root of 5, and x equals 4 minus square root of 5. Then remember, we got these to be zeros by using the zero product property and setting them equal to 0. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set each one of these equal to 0. So I can say x minus 2 equals 0, x minus 4 plus square root of 5 equals 0, and x minus 4, x, got to put parentheses, minus 4 minus square root of 5 equals 0. All right? Now, once we have it to this point, we can write each one of these as factors multiplying to give us our polynomial. So we could say f of x is going to equal x minus 2 times x minus 4 plus square root of 5 times x minus 4 minus square root of 5. All right, so now we have it written as our list of factors. So I took it from the zeros down to the factors. And all I really did was when we factor you know, a polynomial, we work, from the, we work from the function all the way down to the zeros. Well, now what we're doing is working from the zeros to the function. You can see this is kind of like the reverse operation of what we've been doing. So now I need to multiply these out. And this does not look like something very fun from the beginning of it. You look at this and you're saying, oh, crap, how am I going to multiply this? Well, you can multiply this just like you've done before by you know, multiplying. Here's your first two terms. Here's your uh, last two terms. Use the FOIL process if you want to, and you can do it. There is a little trick here, though. What we can do is, by using the associative property, we can actually rewrite our parentheses. So rather than, rather than writing the parentheses around the last two terms, we can write the parentheses around the first two terms. And why would I want to do that? Well, the reason why I want to do that is, again, for the definition of difference of two squares. It's looking for, the looking for difference of two squares. Now if I look at the terms, my first two terms are the same. My last two terms are the same. And then their signs are different. So therefore, that's actually a product of the, or when I multiply those, I'll have a difference of two squares. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I have x minus 2, that's the other parenthesis, times x minus 4 times x minus 4 is x minus 4 squared. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is negative, or square root of 5 times negative square root of 5 is negative 5. All right, so you can see I can apply the difference of two squares as these are my first two terms, these are my last two terms, opposite signs. Now, I am going to have to multiply this out, but it's a perfect square trinomial, so I should be hopefully pretty used to multiplying those because we will practice difference of two squares. So that's going to become x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus 5. Combine that, x minus 2 times x squared minus 8x plus 11. Now I have to multiply a binomial times a trinomial. Going back to kind of some algebra 1, algebra 2 stuff, remember we can, if you're having trouble with that, you can always like label one binomial here and label the other one here. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 2 is a negative 2x squared x times negative x is negative x squared. Negative 8x times negative 2 is a positive 16x. x times 11 is 11x. 11 times negative 2 is a negative 22. These two are the same, so I can combine them. And these two are the same, so I can combine them. So what I have, my final answer, my function is f of x equals x cubed minus 10x squared plus 27x minus 22. There you go. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.